Yeah, James, um, how big is the week for, for Irish football? Well, obviously it's huge. Um, there's a qualification at stake in the game as well. We're at home. So, yeah, it's a huge week. And funny enough, uh, the way football works, it swings back around the day. It's, it just happens to be Denmark. Um, hopefully last thing. Hopefully Monday was better than the last thing. Yeah, just tell us about your memories. They're pretty grim. It took some time to get over, didn't it, that defeat? Yeah, of course. Look, um, there was a chance of qualifying for a World Cup, which, you know, obviously didn't happen. So, yeah, that's, that's going to hurt. We haven't played at a World Cup since 2002. So, not me personally, I've never played at a World Cup. So, it, it was a, a huge opportunity to miss. But, look, I was lucky enough to play in two European Championships. So, come Monday, um, if Man they qualify for a third, then I think that's probably puts the, the ghost uh, the bed. Yeah, the, the ghost. What what did go wrong in that game? It, it was going so well, wasn't it, for the first leg and, and, and up to half-time and, and yeah. second half? To be honest, probably over overconfident. We got the draw. Off, uh, we never played Denmark really before. Got the draw away, went 1-0 up, and you're thinking, oh, that's, that's it. So, um, but I think if we had to play the kind of, we've played them a lot since, if we had to kind of play the UEFA Nations games and that, before that, we had we had a better understanding of, of what they're about, um, which we have now. So we we know what we know what they expect Monday. So hopefully that puts us in a. So what have you learned then? As you said, I think you played them four times since that game. What have you learned? And you've done well. You've drawn all four. What have you done differently? We're just probably more aware of them. If if anything, when you play someone so many times in a short period of time, you start to realise their their kind of strengths and what they're good at and you know we have like you said we three four times we haven't, haven't managed to beat them yet um, we've got another chance on Monday to do that with obviously huge uh, stakes so hopefully we can Monday but um, we just know that they're going to be hard to break down they're going to be good on the ball they're going to be dangerous but this time when we make chances we, we need to take our chances that's yeah. going to be the key and Do you like the fact that you seem to get under their skin a bit? Yeah, I was just asked that question at, uh, by the journalist there. Um, he quoted some of the, the comments that, that they've said. So, um, yeah, hopefully they're, they're more irritated after, after Monday and they're, they're, sick, they're, they're sick of the, the side of us and never want to play us again. So if, if that's the case, then I think we've, we, we've done our job. And just briefly a bit on your, your club form. I know you, you spoke glowingly about Nathan Jones and in the last meeting you, you would have been sad to see him go, I'm sure. New boss coming in, uh, an immediate impact, and for you as well, uh, a terrific game by all accounts at Barnsley. Yeah, look, um, it's, it's obviously difficult. You don't want to see a manager lose their job, do you know what I mean? Um, like I said, I've got so, so much respect for uh, Nathan Jones. Uh, Unfortunately, it just it just wasn't working for whatever reason. We just weren't seeming to get in results, and after the new manager comes on, you know you see it everywhere. It gives kind of for whatever reason it gives it a player and a team a boost, and we started with a, a good one on Saturday. So look, as sad as I was to see kind of Nathan go, um, I know Michael. I've met him a couple of times uh, in in the past. He's got a, a, a brilliant track record, so yeah, we just have to focus on on, on going forward now, and not dwell too much on the on the past. So I'm really excited to to be working under under Michael going forward. And do you think you'll be able to juggle the two roles okay? Because obviously he's now with Northern Ireland, isn't he? Preparing for their Euro games. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I don't see why not. Like he's a intelligent man uh, by all accounts. So. Um, yeah, I think I'll take it on a stride, no bother. Thank you. Jamie. James, hi, how are you? What sort of words would you use if I asked you to describe the Ireland v Denmark rivalry over recent times? Um, boring. Because <laughs> there's been a lot of draws. Um, no, I think they've seen to be a, be a bit more disrespectful towards us than we have uh, towards them. We don't really talk about them. I think they... Even the game in Denmark, they came out with a few quotes here and there leading up to the game. Look, it does, doesn't affect us. Uh, we've got a, a, a job at hand to do. It's going to be a tough ask, of course. 
because they're a good side. But um, yeah, born. But hopefully, hopefully it's another born night on on Monday. But we come out on the the right side of the the, the scoreline. And from your own point of view, you know, in the build up to these games, would you watch or listen? or read what they've said. Like I interviewed Casper Schmeichel after a couple of games in the Aviva and I just thought he was very disrespectful towards Ireland, even sometimes towards the Irish journalists and the questions they were asking him. And we've heard Peter Schmeichel and others have made comments. Do you personally, you know, use them in the build-up, read them, make, would it give you any extra motivation? No, look, obviously you hear about them and I uh, have that sense of kind of, well, you you want to shut them up. You know, that's, that's just natural, but I wouldn't say I get, fixated really on on spending the whole time thinking well I want to you know prove these wrong and yeah of course you but I wouldn't I wouldn't say it takes up too much of my day no I certainly have a sense from watching the games and covering the games that they don't like playing against Ireland they don't like playing against you know players like you they want to get in their face and, and want to upset them and stuff is that a sense you get too have played in the games um no look we just have to well you go into every game wanting, wanting to give your all and Whatever style that, that may be, um, no, it doesn't bother me. Uh, like I said, if we can make it an uncomfortable night on on Monday and get in their faces and just make them think, well, we we don't fancy this, then great. But in the same sense, we still need to do one, so we need to do it in in the right way. And if, if a chance comes along, we, we need to make sure we're clinical because you're not going to get too many chances against them. And as a player who's played in the League of Ireland yourself, you've been around Jack Byrne a little bit in the last couple of squads as well. He's made his debut. He won the PFAI Player of the Year the other night as well. What have you made of how he's done? And, and I know he's hopeful himself to, to make an impact on, on Thursday, certainly. Yeah, Jack, look, Jack's a brilliant lad. Um, sometimes you wish you could put a muzzle on him and just shut up, which is obviously... It's refreshing, do you know what I mean, lad? He just takes it all in a stride. He's, he's showing, especially in the Bulgaria game, when he come on, you know, it was a huge occasion for him. But he 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 showed that he's he's far from out of place at this at, at this level. He was he was brilliant when he came on. He's had a brilliant season, brilliant end of season where he's they won the FA Cup and he's got Player of the Year. So yeah, he'll be full of confidence and he'll be chatting at the but they hopefully get minutes under his belt on on first against New Zealand and no doubt he'll show what a good player he is. And lastly, for me, from you as as an attacking player, would you, you know do you think Jack? could add to the game in Denmark in terms of the passes that he plays for Shamrock Rovers, the passes that he played in, in his Ireland appearance, that, you know, as an attacking player, for him to be able to find you in areas, you know, where his passing is so, so good? I think that's a question you have to ask the manager. Um, <laughs> look, I, I can't answer that for you. If the manager sees uh, if they play Jack on, on Monday, um, yeah, like I said, he's, he's showing he play, he's not out of place at this level, so I think he'll be more than ready if... If, if that's the case. Thank you. James, if you go back to the 5-1, the Christian Eriksen obviously played a central role in what happened that night. How much does how you control him on Monday determine how you, you, the game might come out? Um, yeah, look, it's obviously going to be crucial that you know he doesn't have a good game because he's probably their most influential player. So if he doesn't have a good night, you, you've got probably a better chance. But in the same sense, you can't go on thinking, well, we need to just focus on Ericsson because if you, if that happens, you're going to create opportunities for other players. So, no, there's 11 good players uh, that play for them. Um, so we've we got to be mindful of, of, of them all and make sure we don't focus too much on them. We, we need to impose ourselves on them and our game plan, and I'm sure we'll do that this week, to make sure we give ourselves the best chance come Monday. You got into the, the island team as a, a relatively young man. You're, you're now one of the senior players, I suppose. Do you enjoy that responsibility and do you, do you relish in that? You scored a lot of goals in the last campaign in particular. Yeah, the, obviously the last campaign went really well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm due a goal. I uh, haven't scored this campaign yet, so obviously it'd be nice if that was the you know the case the case on Monday. Um, but yeah, the answer to your question about being a, a, a senior member now, it's... It just kind of happens. You don't even realise it without knowing. It's just the years go by and just that just happens. All of a sudden, you find yourself in the old v young and you're in the old team. When it comes to the small side of games, you're thinking, well, where, where's the years gone? But ah, look, I'm, I'm 30 and feel great, feel fit, probably fitter than ever. So 
I'd like to think I got a few more years on, uh, left on me yet, and if I can help any anybody coming through, if they want the advice, or not to do what I've done when I first came through, uh, we a few silly things here and there. Hopefully, I can uh, pass on the uh, words of wisdom. I mean, there are some even younger players than you were now in, in and around the squad. If if there was one piece of advice you would give them, what what would that be? Stay off social media. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no. Just look. Just apply yourself in the best possible way. Be the best pro you can be. Um, look, I was told by <clears throat> Martin O'Neill when I first at, at Sunderland, he said. Because of being a good pro and, and work right alone, you'll you'll make a good career for yourself. Uh, and it's something that I've always kept with me and taken on board. So I pride myself on on how I look after myself and how my fitness levels are. So yeah, so that was, I would kind of just reiterate what what Martin said to me and pass that on. Uh, hi, James. Uh, you don't have to get into this if you don't want to, but I know there are new stories this morning that the FA will investigate sectarian mm -hmm. chanting toward you um, against Barnsley. I know that you've been very frustrated at the FA in the past. We were talking to you after that birthday card that you posted online. Like, would you have a message for the FA in this kind of latest round of of investigations and and so on as to what you endure? Look, they give them the, their fair dues. Uh, I got contacted by a member of the FA on Friday before the Barnsley game. Uh, just offering support, so oh, even ahead well, of time, just kind of expecting it. I wouldn't expect it. No, it was it was yeah. it was quite a shock. But in the same sense, credit where it's due. You know, he, he didn't have to text me. He hasn't for the last kind of eight years. Yeah. But look, well, credit where it's due. They did. They offered support, and they seem to be following up the the chance from what, what happened on Saturday. So yeah, look, I'm. I was. Criticised them in the past, but I'm big enough as well. They they show and give credit where it's due. Mm. Do you have anything in mind as what an appropriate punishment for the fans is? The fans that are singing these these songs. Um, no, look, that's not up for me. They uh, they decide, um, and I'm an expert in that department, so mm. yeah, I'm sure they'll do what they see fit. Yeah. Um, this is an annual thing now for you in England. Are you not sick of playing football in England in November? No. No. No, not really. Uh, like I said, it doesn't bother me. It probably affects me, my wife and me, me, my mom more. But you know, that's something I kind of just probably don't take into consideration how how they feel. Like for me, it's just you know I just get on with it. I think over the years I've developed a uh, kind of thick skin, and that's just. Water for ducks back to me yeah. when it happens. Okay, um, so you're back in the international camp. Obviously. This is the defining week. Um, you've been ever present in this campaign, but how would you assess your performances and your form across it? Because as you mentioned, the go you've scored so many important goals in the previous campaign. Those haven't arrived yet. No, they haven't arrived, and that's obviously something where I can you know improve on and something I want to improve on. Um, look, but I've played every game, and we're one game away from qualifying. So. Yeah, I haven't probably scored goals. Obviously, you're, you're as a, an attacking player, you're probably judged on goals and assists, but I've, I've got one or two assists, which turned out to be uh, crucial. So, oh, look, obviously the manager sees, sees him doing something right. If he's, if he's picking me every week, I know some lads, if it was up to him, I wouldn't wouldn't kick a ball again. But look, enough for me that they have no kind of education in the game and the manager picks the team. So you're not going into games almost worrying the fact that you haven't scored a goal. It's it's not something that is kind of bothering. Oh, it's not worrying me because I yeah. feel like I can help the team in other ways. Maybe not pretty on the eye, but effective. Um, but yeah, look, I've scored a lot of goals for Ireland in the past. So and I'm due one. So hopefully, look, hopefully that can be Monday. Yeah. So yeah. For those people who will point and say you scored X amount of goals two years ago and you haven't scored yet, yeah. is there anything that's different in your team, in the in your role in the team? Are you being asked to do different things that the, some of your critics are not aware of? You know, you can't really go by what you've done in the past. You know what I mean? Like the opportunities just present themselves in the past. I've managed to put them away. Maybe haven't had as many opportunities. Uh, Thus far, but who to say I'm not going to get a good opportunity on 
on Monday and, and put it away. So, no, you just take each game, take each game as it comes, and hopefully, like I said, I get a good opportunity and I manage to put it away if I'm playing on, yeah. on Monday. Yeah, um, with the 5 1 uh, fresh in everyone's mind going into this game, are you motivated by revenge at all? Is that a thing in your mind against Denmark? No, um, like I said, uh, I've said this plenty of times in the past. You can't right the wrongs of that night because of what was at stake. You know, just like I said, but funny enough, you know, the way football works, we're having another chance to qualify for another tournament um, against Denmark, it's starting to be, but so, yeah, that's motivation in itself, they qualify, so, no, nah, there's no revenge, I know people like this kind of balled up this little story of, like, revenge and this and that, but no, yeah. it's motivation itself is qualifying. Yeah, and my last question is, obviously, home advantage can be a massive advantage. Would you have any message to fans in terms of, of making that advantage, or use the word again, as big as it can be? No, our, our, the fans that pack the stadium uh, are always brilliant. They'll be fair to them. Um, the Switzerland game was probably the best atmosphere we've had in a, a very long time. So um, if they can recreate that um, and help us go one better this time and, and, and pick up the one, yeah, then obviously it, it helps when you, you, you've got the what, 40, 40 odd thousand uh, Ireland fans uh, back on you. So, yeah, that'd be, yeah. that'd be nice. Thanks very much. No problem.